In the near future, eugenics rules society and most people are perfectly engineered in labs. Everyone is registered in a genetic database and those who were made in labs are classified as valids, while those conceived naturally are known as invalids because they're more susceptible to genetic disorders, from actual illnesses to just baldness. Genetic discrimination is technically illegal, but employers still take urine tests or even the saliva on the resume envelope, which results in genotype profiling. This meant invalids are always relegated to menial jobs. At his apartment, Vincent takes a long time to shave and scrub himself until his body is spotless, then he burns any hairs and dead skin that could have fallen. Next he takes a urine bag from the fridge and connects it to his groin so he can pass it off as his own. He also puts a bit of blood inside a fake fingertip, which he carefully attaches to his actual finger. Afterward Vincent goes to work at the Gattaca Aerospace Corporation. Every employee must prick their finger for an identity check to be allowed in, and Vincent lets the machine take the blood from his fake fingertip. Then he sits at his desk and works on a computer, running different space flight plans. Every so often, he cleans all DNA traces from his keyboard with a little device. The mission director comes by and shows his respect for Vincent's cleanliness, he also confirms he's been chosen to join the flight to Saturn's moon Titan in a week. After the man is gone, Vincent secretly opens a jar and sprinkles some skin, hair, and nails around his workstation. Then he puts a hair on the comb that he keeps in his desk drawer. Later Vincent is put through a substance test to check he's clean before the mission. Using the hidden bag, he offers the urine sample and when the doctor checks it on the machine, the result says his name is Jerome and he's a valid. After work, Vincent goes to watch another aircraft leaving Earth and his co-worker Irene comes by to congratulate him for getting the mission. She also points out he's the only employee that watches every single launch every day. A flashback then begins showing Vincent's early life. His parents had a quickie on the beach and his mother accidentally got pregnant, so Vincent was born naturally, which was already rare back then. As soon as the doctors grabbed him, they took a blood sample and concluded he had a high chance to suffer from many conditions, so his life expectancy was 30 years. Vincent's childhood was quite difficult because every little thing like a runny nose or a little scratch were treated by his mother as a fatal threat. No school would accept Vincent as a student because insurance wouldn't cover any trouble he got in for his bad genes. Eventually his parents decided to have a second child and this time they went to a genetic lab to do things by the book. Anton had no conditions at all and was happy to spend time with his brother, but Vincent could tell his parents had a favorite. Whenever their parents weren't looking, the brothers would play chicken in the sea, meaning they would compete to see who could swim the farthest away from shore before getting scared and turning back. Anton always defeated Vincent in this competition, which added to his inferiority complex. As Vincent continued to grow up, he became interested in space and dreamed of becoming an astronaut. His parents warned him nobody would hire him because of his genes but he didn't listen and he went to a few interviews. To his dismay, nobody hired him just like his parents had guessed. One afternoon, the brothers went for another swim and to Anton's shock, this time Vincent defeated him. In fact Vincent had to go back and help a tired Anton return to the shore. That was the last time they swam together because in the evening, Vincent left his family home to pursue his dreams. Eventually Vincent got a job at Gattaca as a janitor. As he cleaned the offices, he sometimes used the computer when nobody was watching, and he would admire the daily launches. He also learned about the blood prick that happened on the same finger every day, and stole a little sensor that fell from a machine. Vincent never stopped dreaming, and the head janitor would mock him for it. In his apartment, Vincent would never stop exercising, which could take a toll on his body. Desperate for progress, in the end he decided to contact a man in the black market who introduced him to the real Jerome, a former swimming star with great IQ and perfect health except for his legs. He was paralyzed after being hit by a car and became wheelchair bound. The incident happened overseas and wasn't recorded, so nobody knew Jerome became an invalid. Vincent paid both men to get Jerome's identity and a long transformation process began. He got contact lenses to replace his glasses and get Jerome's eye color, he also cut his hair and styled it like Jerome's. ID pictures wouldn't be a problem because nobody paid attention to those anymore, everything was DNA dependent. The last issue was that Jerome was taller than Vincent, meaning that Vincent had to reluctantly undergo a painful procedure that broke his legs and extended them until the heights matched. Vincent moved into Jerome's apartment to also have his address and during the first few days he had to rest to recover from the procedure, meaning he was often in pain. During those days Vincent learned Jerome's signature and how to write with his other hand while Jerome kept filling bags with urine and blood. One day Jerome showed Vincent his silver medal to remind him he has a lot to live up to. Jerome also told Vincent to call him by his middle name Eugene so that Vincent could get used to being called Jerome. When the day for Vincent's interview finally came, he took a urine bag and tested it on the machine only to get an error message because the urine contained alcohol. Vincent started yelling at Jerome for the consequences of his addiction, and after testing a bunch of bags, he found the last one was clean and took it with him. At the office, the doctor ran the test and the machine confirmed Vincent was Jerome, therefore a valid. They didn't send him to an actual interview, he just got instantly hired for his IQ. From then on, Vincent had to scrub his body thoroughly every day to get rid of loose skin, nails, and hair, which was all burned in an incinerator. 
All the clothes were kept in sealed bags to avoid contamination. While working, Vincent would spread Jerome's samples on his desk to keep up the illusion and use the fake fingertip with Jerome's blood to pass the identity check at the door. Nobody ever suspected anything. Back in the present, everyone in Gattaca is freaking out because the company administrator has been murdered with a keyboard. Jerome scratches his eye while staring at the gruesome scene and doesn't notice that an eyelash falls off. The cops soon come to pick up every single trail of DNA from the scene of the crime, which includes the eyelash. The boss tells Irene to assist the police in any way they need. The mission isn't cancelled and Vincent will still be going to space. When he shares the news with Jerome, they decide to go out to celebrate. They drink a lot and even do some tricks with smoke inside their glasses. At the office, Irene takes the hair from Vincent's drawer and takes it to a matchmaking service where they run some tests to conclude Vincent is quite a catch. By the end of the night, Jerome is so drunk that Vincent has to help him to bed. Suddenly Jerome makes a confession. He hadn't been drunk during the car crash and it hadn't been an accident, he had actually been trying to self-delete. The next morning, the police forensic department tests all the samples and discovers a mysterious invalid had been in Gattaca, so now he's the prime suspect. Back to Vincent, he puts the little sensor he stole back in his janitor days on Jerome's chest to record 20 minutes of his pulse as he whirls the wheels of his chair extra hard to simulate exercise. Later at Gattaca, Vincent is put on a running test and he replaces the office sensor with the one he brought from home. Meanwhile the detectives investigate the invalid profile from the eyelash and discover it belongs to a janitor that disappeared a few years ago. They come to the office to ask some questions and Vincent overhears them while they talk, which makes him nervous. To make matters worse, the 20 minute long recording soon ends and Vincent's real pulse appears, which is rather high. He immediately rushes to the locker room and collapses as he tries to catch his breath. After work, Irene meets with Vincent and admits she read his DNA sequence, which of course actually was Jerome's. She's very impressed by how perfect he is and feels inferior, admitting that she's a lab baby but still has a likelihood of heart failure. This means she'll never be allowed to join a mission. When Vincent says he doesn't see anything wrong with her, Irene hands him a lock of her hair and encourages him to test it to discover her genetic flaws, but Vincent tosses it away and claims that the wind blew it. Sometime later, Vincent is working at the computer when suddenly all the employees get the profile of the invalid from the eyelash because he's a wanted man. Thankfully nobody recognizes him, but Vincent is still afraid. When he gets home he tells Jerome that he's the prime suspect and starts throwing away all the blood and urine bags. Jerome immediately stops him, reminding him they would never look at Vincent and see an invalid. That night, Vincent decides to go out because it would be suspicious if he changed his routine. When Jerome looks out the window, he sees that Irene has come to pick Vincent up. Moments later Vincent and Irene are attending a piano concert as their first date. After the concert, the pianist throws his glove into the audience, and Vincent realizes he has 12 fingers. Irene explains such a complex piece of music could only be played by those hands. Meanwhile the detectives are rounding up a bunch of invalids from the neighborhood in order to find the murderer, but obviously none of their DNA matches the eyelash. They decide to investigate all the buildings that surround Gattaca and they make it to Jerome's apartment, so he gets a blood test too. The detective is surprised that wheelchair-bound man could be working at Gattaca, so Jerome pretends to be offended and yells at him, saying he just got hurt during training and accusing him of discrimination. Not wanting trouble, the detective leaves. At Gattaca, some officers take away all the trash bags. On their way home, Irene and Vincent find the road blocked by the cops too because they're inspecting everyone in the area. Vincent immediately removes his contacts and avoids a spit test by saying he's been drinking. The cops take a blood sample instead and his fake fingertip tricks them as always. After they pass the check, Irene announces she wants to show Vincent something and stops the car a few miles ahead. She quickly crosses the street while dodging incoming cars, but Vincent is hesitant because he can't see well without his contacts. After lots of doubts, he runs in and thankfully avoids getting hit. Then Irene takes him to watch the sunrise at the solar panel center, which causes a beautiful effect of light that Vincent sees rather blurry. On their way out, Irene notices that Vincent's eyes look different and he blames it on a trick of the light. Sometime later, the detectives discover that a cup from the office trash has the same DNA as the eyelash. They theorize the invalid may be working in disguise and killed the administrator because he found out the truth. To be sure, they go to Gattaca and announce they're taking blood samples directly from the vein instead of fingertips. When it's Vincent's turn, he pretends the doctor has hurt him with a needle and jumps out of the seat, quickly changing his blood sample with Jerome's. The detectives run the tests again and no match is found. That night, Vincent and Irene go on a second date. Their sweet dancing is interrupted by the cops, who start picking up all kinds of things with DNA like napkins and cigarette ends. They want to test people too, so Vincent immediately escapes with Irene through the back door. A cop tries to stop them, but Vincent immediately starts beating him up until he's unconscious. As Irene gets scared and calls him insane, Vincent drags her away to escape through some dark alleys. When the other cops find their partner on the ground, they start looking for the couple, who hides in an alley. One of the detectives yells the name Vincent and Irene asks who that is, but Vincent answers by kissing her. Moments later, 
The couple is at Irene's apartment having their first time together. In the morning, Vincent finds a hair on the pillow, so he rushes to the beach and uses sand and rocks to rub the excess skin from his body. When he goes back, Irene asks him about his leg scars and Vincent says it was a car accident. Meanwhile the detectives are comparing Jerome's profile to Vincent's and decide more testing is in order. They go back to Gattaca and take the keys from Vincent's keyboard while asking about him, still using Jerome's name. Irene overhears this and immediately warns Vincent, saying he looks sick and he should go home. Vincent understands she's talking in code and leaves the building while Irene tells the detective that Vincent went home because he was ill. This doesn't stop the detective, who asks Irene to take him to Jerome's home. At the same time, Vincent calls Jerome and tells him to be himself because the police are coming. Jerome has to drop the wheelchair and start climbing the stairs to the main floor by slowly dragging his legs. It takes him a while but he makes it to the buzzer just in time to let Irene and the detective in. Then he drags his body to the chair and fixes his legs to look natural. Once the duo comes in, Jerome plays his part and asks Irene for a kiss, which she gives to him to keep up with the lie. The detective takes a blood sample and is frustrated to see this is indeed Jerome. Then he tries to go downstairs, where Vincent and the lab are hiding, but at that moment he gets a call from his partner saying they've captured the murderer, so the detective leaves. Afterward Vincent comes out and Irene sees him next to Jerome as they call each other that name. Hurt, she rushes out, but Vincent follows her and explains his situation, swearing he didn't kill anyone. Irene is still wary and leaves. At the police station, it's revealed that the director's spit was found in the victim's eye, confirming he's the killer. It turns out the administrator had threatened to cancel the Titan mission, so the director killed him to achieve his dream. Sometime later, Vincent returns to his desk and finds the detective there, who suddenly drops a big reveal, he's Vincent's brother Anton. They hadn't recognized their faces at first because they hadn't seen each other since their teen years but Anton started to get the clues together during the investigation. Anton accuses Vincent of fraud and wants to arrest him, so an argument ensues. Vincent thinks Anton wants to see him fail and reminds him of who won the last race, causing Anton to challenge him again. It's night time by the time the brothers make it to the beach. They quickly jump in the water and start swimming, going so far that they lose sight of the shore. Anton worries they're pushing their limits, but Vincent calls him a coward so they keep going. However Anton starts feeling the fatigue and points it out again, so Vincent finally reveals how he does it, he never saves energy for the return. Frustrated, Anton turns back only to start drowning, so Vincent goes back too and grabs him to then swim to the shore. A few hours later, Vincent visits Irene and offers a strand of his hair. However Irene throws it away, saying the wind did it. They spend the night together at her place as a goodbye since Vincent will be gone on his mission for a year. The next morning, Vincent returns to his apartment and finds the lab covered in plastic. Jerome reveals he's had prepared enough sample bags to last him two lifetimes, implying he won't be around when Vincent returns. When Vincent asks him where he's going, he only says I'm traveling too. Jerome also hands Vincent a card, telling him not to open it until he's in space. Afterward Vincent goes to Gattaca to get ready for his mission. The doctor informs him that there's been a change of policy, so a new urine sample is needed. Vincent hadn't expected this and didn't bring Jerome's bag, so he starts peeing in a cup while lamenting the loss of his dream. However the doctor reveals he's always known and never said anything because he also has an invalid kid and thinks he deserves better. The machine offers the wrong profile but the doctor changes it for Jerome's and lets Vincent pass anyway. Before he leaves, the doctor informs him that he knew because Vincent always grabbed his member with the wrong hand. At the apartment, Jerome grabs his silver medal and enters the incinerator, ending things for himself at the same time Jerome gets on the spaceship and leaves the planet. Once Vincent is far enough, he opens Jerome's card and discovers a large lock of his hair. Now Jerome has technically visited space as well.